All right, you guys, we wrapped up uh, Module 3. We're starting Module 4. This is a pretty easy lesson, you guys. It's uh, understanding polynomial expressions. Don't forget all your lessons can be found right there at that groovy site. And if you go to that site, this is Integrated Math 2. So there's the Integrated Math 2 link, and then it's going to be right down here. It's going to be this lesson. So as soon as I load it, I'll insert it uh, right there. Okay, so here we go. So um, uh, just to review real quick, you guys, um, whole numbers are counting numbers starting at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So those are whole numbers, okay? Integers, integers are whole numbers and all the negative whole numbers, okay? So we're going to be focusing on in this lesson <clears throat> whole numbers, excuse me. So our question here is, what are polynomials and how do we simplify them? And you guys have probably done this before. If not, I think it goes pretty easy. So monomials, you guys. A monomial is either a number, it's a variable, or it could be the product of numbers and variables. Uh, and if the variables uh, have exponents, they have to be whole number exponents, okay? So monomial stands for one or one term, and so there's no variables in the denominator and no fractional exponents or no decimal exponents either. They're whole number exponents. Okay, so here's some examples of monomials. Here's a, a number. Here's a variable. Here's the product of a number and some variables right here. Same here. Here's the product of a number and some variables right here. And then here's a, this is one-fifth, so the number is one-fifth. And these are actually called coefficients. So the coefficient of this monomial is one-fifth. The coefficient of this, is that a decimal right there? It looks like it is. Anyways, um, I should have put a zero there, but the coefficient would be uh, 0 0.25. Um, I'm seeing a decimal. Are you guys? It's right before school, so you're hearing some bells. You'll hear one more in a minute. The coefficient here is negative 4. The coefficient here is this 1 that's hidden right here. And, the, and, and this is just 4. There is no variables right here, so it's called a constant. These guys are not monomials. This is called a binomial. We'll talk about it in just a minute here. This is another binomial. Bi means 2. This is not even a, a, a polynomial, you guys. A polynomial... Uh, well, this is not a monomial because that's a negative exponent right here, and it would put it in the denominator. You cannot have variables in the denominator right here. Okay, this is uh, x to the one half, so it's a fractional exponent right here. So when you have a square root, it's like to the one half, so it's not monomial. So okay, so explain why 16 to the one third is a monomial, but x to the one third is not. Okay, well 16 to the one third is just a number, the root, the cube root of 16. That's some number, you guys. So in numbers are monomials and so uh, that one's okay but x to the one-third there's the final bell right there that's the tardy bell x to the one-third um, is is not a monomial because you can't have a variable that has a fractional exponents it has to be a whole number right there how about this is this a monomial x to the zero well remember anything to the zero is one and so since one is a number one is a, a monomial right there so and also you guys zero is a whole number exponent right there so so we're good on that one that one is a monomial okay so classifying polynomials okay a polynomial it can be a monomial or it could be the sum or difference of other monomials. Okay, so remember a monomial is one term, a binomial has two terms, and a trinomial has three terms. Okay, so here's some examples of binomials. We already did some examples of monomials. Okay, so binomials, they're just two terms, one, two terms. Here's another binomial, this term plus this term right here. Trinomials have three terms, this term plus this term plus this term. One, two, three. There's three terms right there, okay? All right, and then the degree of a polynomial is the greatest value among the sum of the exponents of the variables in each term. Okay, so for example here, here's a binomial right here. And so to find the degree, we add the exponents in each monomial. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add this exponent. There's a hidden one right there and add that exponent. We're going to add, add, and add that one right there to find the degrees. Let's slide that up. So the, mon the monomial that has the higher degree determines the degree of the whole polynomial. Okay, so here, the degree of this uh, monomial is 3 because we add the 1 plus 2. The degree of the other monomial is 7 because we add these exponents right here. So since this is the higher degree, then that is going to be the degree of that binomial. Okay, we take the highest degree. All right, so here we go. Classify the polynomials by its degree and the number of terms. Okay, so this is a binomial because 
because there's two terms. And then uh, we're going to add those exponents. Okay, so the, the degree of this monomial is 7, the degree of this monomial is 6, so we take the higher of the two, so the degree of the whole polynomial, the binomial, is 7. Okay, the higher of the two. All right, this one here. Okay, so three terms, so it's a trinomial. Okay, so the degree of this guy, this is like x to the 0. This is 9. 3 squared is 9. 9x nine to the 0, so the degree is 0. Okay, the degree of this guy is 3 because of that 3 right there, and the degree of 8n, 8n to the 1 power is 1, so take the highest degree, so it's 3. The degree of this trinomial is 3 right there. Okay, how about this guy right here? Okay, those uh, x to the 0 and y to the 0 are just 1, so it's really 5 times 1 times times 1, which is 5 plus 5, which is 10, and that's a monomial, you guys, and since it has no variable, or does, x to the 0, okay, um, or y to the 0, or xy to the 0, or xyz to the 0, anyways, the degree is 0, okay? All right, how about this? Is this a polynomial? Okay, well, I'm going to say no, because this variable has a, has a decimal exponent, and it's not a whole number, so it's not even a, a, a polynomial right there, okay, because it has to be whole number exponents. All right, standard form of polynomial, it has to have one variable, only one variable in it, and it's written in decreasing degrees, and we call it descending order, okay, some books do anyways, descending order. So when it's in standard form, you guys, when it's in descending order or decreasing degrees the monomials are then the coefficient of the first term is called the leading coefficient okay so here here's a polynomial that's written written in standard form so we have the highest power then the next highest power then the next highest power and then the constant is always at the end right here sometimes it doesn't have a constant but anyways it's a fourth degree because that's the the highest uh, degree right there and the leading coefficient is that five right there okay all right, so write each polynomial in standard form and, and give the leading coefficient. Okay, so we've got to start with the highest power, this negative 4x to the third, minus 2x squared plus 20x plus 1. Okay, so there it is in standard form, and the leading coefficient is that negative 4. Now, it didn't say state the degree, but the degree is that 3 right there. Okay, all right, here, this one here, so put it in standard form. Okay, so the highest power, then the next highest power, then the next one. Okay, so the leading coefficient is this negative 1 right here, and the degree is the 6 because of that 6 right there. Okay, easy, right? Told you. So polynomials can be simplified by combining like terms, and like terms are monomials that have the same variables, and the variables have to be to the same power. So let's simplify, okay? So I have some uh, y cubes here and here, and I have some y squareds here and here. Those are our like terms, okay? So we just add the coefficients. So negative 2 plus 2, it cancels. There's 0 y squared, so they just cancel. And then negative 7, uh, I'm sorry, negative 8 plus this 1 right here is negative 7 y squareds, okay? So easy, right? Hope so. All right, so I have some p cubes, q cubes. I have some p to the fifth, q to the fourth. Okay, oops, this is supposed to be a, what am I doing? I made a mistake right there. Yeah, that's supposed to be a squared. Let me switch that right here. This is supposed to be a squared right there, okay? All right, so then I have uh, this p squared q cubed is going to be the same as this p squared q cubed. And then this p to the fifth q to the fourth, we're going to match with this p to the fifth q to the fourth right there, okay? All right, so these guys are like terms because they have the same variables with the same powers. And then the red guys have the same variables with the same powers. So here we're going to go ahead and add this 1 plus negative 4, and we're going to add this negative 4 plus 3 for the coefficients right there. All right, and so we should get that right there, okay? Easy enough. All right, almost done, okay? And then this one here, so look at the ones that have, um, are there any more y cubed x's? Yeah, right here, y cubed x. Are there any more y squared x? And so I don't see any more, so that's all by itself. But there are a couple of y squares. So let's group our like terms together right there and then add the coefficients, okay? There's a negative 1 right here. There's a positive 1 here. They cancel, okay? And then over here we have y squared plus y squared is 2y squared, okay? So there it is simplified right there. All right, this one's a little goofy right here. So we just look at the variables, you guys. What are my like terms, okay? Here's an ABC, and the coefficient is this uh, cube root of 5. There goes my coffee right there. Uh, it's about 7.06 right now in the morning. Uh, we have zero periods, so at my school...
Anyways, here's an ABC, and so 2 to the 6. So I'm going to combine these like terms with this coefficient and this coefficient. Okay, do not uh, change that to a decimal. We'll leave it as the cube root of 5. Okay, and then this is all by itself. I'm going to change this to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and then this is going to be 9 of them. Okay, and if you don't know 2 to the 6, get, make that be your friend. That is 64. Okay, and then 2 to the 9th is uh, 512, so just multiply it out. So, anyways, that's our answer right there. Isn't this a goofy looking coefficient right there? You can't combine these. These are not like uh, radicals. This doesn't even have a cube root of 5, but this would have to have a, a cube root of 5 to be able to add to that. So, that's our answer right there. So, here's our coefficient 64 plus the cube root of 5. ABC and then 5 plus 512 AB. All right, and then one application here. So a skyrocket is launched from a six foot high platform with an initial speed of 200 feet per second. So this polynomial right here gives the height in feet the skyrocket will rise in t seconds. So how high will the rocket rise in a five second fuse? Okay, so the five second fuse is our time. Okay, so we're gonna sub in five for t, so there we go. Have to do the exponent first, so five squared is 25 right there. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and do multiplication second, so six, Negative 16 times 25 is negative 400. This is 1,000. Now we add from left to right. So negative 400 plus 1,000 is 600. 600 plus 6 is 606. Don't forget to answer the question. So the rocket's going to rise to 606 feet. All right, if you are in our class, that's going to be your assignment. And there's your answers. And, and you'll have to pause. Take care.